The moon is the Earth's nearest neighbor. Ooh, I sounded like, um, who's that guy? David Attenborough. The moon is the Earth's nearest neighbor. As we look to the hollows of the glaciac action, we can see that a young chimp has lost its mother. <laughs> okay, so the distance between the centers of the Earth, uh, the distance between the centers of the Earth and the moon is that. Okay, so let's go make a little picture. Um... We've got this, and we've got this. So let's say this is the Earth, and this is the Moon. Now it says that the Moon is the Earth's nearest neighbor. The distance between the centers, hello, not the surfaces, the centers. Whoops, let's write that a bit better. Earth. Whoops. Okay, so the distance between uh, the centers of the Earth and the Moon is um, this many meters. And the mass of the moon is that. Okay, so 7.5 times 10 to the 22 kilos. Did you know that on your formula sheet, they do give you the mass and the radius of the Earth? Okay, that is on your formula sheet. So, the first question says, state Newton's law of universal gravitation in words. So, before we give the, the definition, let's write the formula. That's the formula that goes like this. Okay, and so from the formula, we can get the definition. It tells us that the force of attraction between objects is directly proportional to the product of their mass, their product, and inversely, which means at the bottom, inversely proportional to the distance between, this should actually be a D, because um, it's not always radius. So inversely proportional to the distance between their centers squared. Okay, now let's go get the formal definition so we can see what it looks like on a word-for-word -word basis. Okay, so here we go. Each particle, I'm, I'm reading up here, each particle in the universe attracts every other particle with a gravitational force. Here we go. That is directly proportional to the product of their mass. Directly proportional to the product of their mass and inversely proportional, meaning it's at the bottom, to the square of the distance between their centers. Now, your teacher's definition or what you've seen in your textbook might not have that exact same word for word, but they don't mind that. They're looking for specific things, okay? Specifically, the directly proportional to the product of their mass. There's a mark. And then inversely proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. This part in the beginning is different for all textbooks, okay? This question says, calculate the force exerted by the Earth and the Moon. Now, some people panic. They're like, how do I know the difference between the force of the Earth on the Moon and the force of the Moon on the Earth, for example? Guys, it doesn't matter. Newton's third law. Our homie had our backs back in the day when he discovered that if, a, if, if, if Paul hits John, then the force that Paul exerts on John is the same as the force that John exerts on Paul. Or if... Um, you know, if the Earth exudes a first force on the Moon, it's the same as the force of the Moon on the Earth. It is all the same. If you go punch the wall right now, the wall is going to punch you back. How would you know that? Well, your wrist and your hand is going to be extremely sore. So, Newton's third law has our back. The teachers are just trying to confuse you here. They might as well just say calculate the force between the two objects. Okay? So, we're just going to go use um, this formula. We're not going to worry about Earth on Moon, Moon on Earth, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so let's go to our formula sheet and just go grab the Earth's um, mass. We're going to need that. So you see here I'm on the formula sheet and in the table you can see that um, if you needed it, right at the bottom you've got mass of Earth and radius of Earth. We're not going to need radius of Earth now, but sometimes we do. Um, and so if we have mass of Earth, I'm just busy writing this value down as I speak. 5.98 times 10 to 24. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so now I have the maths. <laughs> maths, what the heck was that? The mass of the um, of the Earth. 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. Excellent. So now we just use this formula. And so we can just go F equals 2. Now, ah, oh, we should have gotten G. Let's quickly go back. So here we can see capital G. Um, is um, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. I think in the IEB curriculum, most of you are caps, but there are some of you who are IEB. Uh, your value might be a little bit different, like 6.6 .6, um, or 6.7. So just double check that, okay? But for caps learners, it's usually just given to us like this. The, the main thing is just use whatever's on your formula sheet on the day of the exam. 
So 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. So we can say 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Uh, the mass of the first object could be the moon or it could be Earth, does not matter. Okay, and then uh, the other object which could be planet Earth. And then the formula is the distance between their centers. So we don't need the radii or anything like that because they've given us the distance between their centers. If the question gave us the distance between their surfaces, then we would need the radius of each object to add on to get our final distance of here. Okay, now that distance is 3.84 times 10 to the 8. It must be in meters, which it is, which is great. Remember to square it. A lot of learners forget that. And let's go type those 6,053,268,62 <laughs> numbers on our calculator. Okay. Six foot. Some of you are like, what is this guy smoking? Times 5.98 times 10 to the 24 over 3.84 times 10 to the 8 squared. Remember the squared. Ooh, it's a big number. So if we round to two decimal places, it's going to be 2, comma, uh, 0, 3 uh, times 10 to the 20 newtons. This last one says, what is the magnitude of the force exerted by the moon on the earth? Because here it said the earth on the moon. Now this is where our home dog Newton comes to save the day. So we will say the exact same value that we got in the previous one. So we'll just say 2.03 times 10 to the 20. Then we can just say according to Newton's third law, the earth and moon will exert equal forces on each other but in opposite directions. Don't know why this is only worth two marks. If it was two marks, I would have just said that one and my, my reason would have been Newton's third law. But then I went and looked at the memo and I'm like, what? For two marks, you have to go write this Yulishta um, thing. <laughs> and then um, you have to go write that whole thing. And then I'm out of Afrikaans, by the way. I just found that word funny. Um, it would be funny if this whole time I've been Afrikaans and yeah, I've been teaching in English. No, okay, no, it wouldn't be that funny. There's more of English people. So yeah, it makes sense. Um, so yeah, two marks.